Hello there and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. Today is episode 320 and today is also February 28th, 2024. Welcome. If you're watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from and hello to my replay warriors. I want to give a special shout out to my Pixie patrons. You'll see them in, a ch in the chat with a little magic wand icon next to their name. We're so grateful for their support of the channel. You can always join my Pixie patrons. The join button is just below the video next to the subscribe button. If you don't see that button, try going to a browser versus the YouTube app, depending on your device. I hope you guys are having a great week. I have a Velcro dot dispenser box for you this week. Lily's been out of school the last two days, not feeling well. So my priority has been her, but I wanted to come live with you tonight. And I've promised you this Velcro box for a while. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Something fairly quick and easy. And this is like a little gift to yourself. I love to do 3D projects for storage options because they just make me smile on my in my crafty space. So um, this is going to hold um, basically a roll of the thin clear fasteners. You'll find a link to both the project sheet for this as well as the specific Velcro dots that I designed this for. Now I use Velcro dots quite often to close many of my boxes and they're a really great price uh, off of Amazon. So you can find that link in the description. If you've got a question for me tonight, put a cue in front of your question. That will make it into my cue when I do tonight's live Q&A at the end of the live stream. That way I can focus on tonight's project and then I can pull together all your questions and stay on until I get them all answered. Please do save the queue for questions only. And Brian's keeping his eye on the chat for you. He's over here <laughs> in case you forget to put the queue in front of it. We are on the last day and a bit of a celebration. So tomorrow, leap since it's leap year, February 29th is the last day of celebration. So it is the last opportunity to grab free products for the 2024 celebration. Celebration will not come around again until 2025. So you can earn free products with orders of $50 or more. If you place a big order, you can earn additional stamp rewards. So orders of 300 or more earn an additional $30 in stamp rewards. Or if you've been thinking about joining the Stampin' Up! family or you're looking for a really great deal, the starter kit during celebration is amazing. You've got two choices. Both of them are $99 plus tax. Both ship for free. One comes with $125 in product plus the, uh, <laughs> the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio. I almost said Stampin' Seal. Sometimes that Stampin' trips me up. The Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, which is a $60 value, so you're getting... What is that? $185 for $99. Or you can do just an additional $30 in product of your choice. That's $155 in product of your choice for $99. So all of those things go away tomorrow night at midnight. Well, I should say 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time, whichever time zone you're in. So we've got some cool online exclusives that are coming up next week. I'll tell you all about those next Wednesday. We're going to be live again is that March 6th? I think next Wednesday is March 6th. That will be episode 321. So that's what's coming up. I'm going to flip the camera and we're going to jump right into tonight's project. Here we are again. This is the Velcro dot dispenser box and it's designed with a little dispenser here. Now I will tell you that I made this box. I want to say it was around Thanksgiving time. So I'm making it again for the first time with you tonight. So <laughs> I, that's why I preface this week's been a little bit crazy. So um, we're going to jump into this. I'm going to do a different colorway here. Well, let me share the products we're using. We've got the So Refreshing stamp set. I thought this was just an adorable sentiment for the Velcro dots because in the package that comes, uh, the Velcro package, the hooks and the loops are actually on separate plastic strips. So I actually sandwich them all together and then roll them up to put inside this box. So I thought that was cute. Time spent together is the sweetest. Referring to the Velcro dots, of course. But that is from the So Refreshing stamp set. Okay. And then we're going to be using the Glorious Gingham Designer Series Paper. I love this one. This is in the annual catalog. Both of these are annual catalog. Um, but I love the colors in this. Berry Burst, Blueberry Bushel, Lemon Lime Twist, Pecan Pie, and Pretty Peacock. 
So we're doing a blueberry bushel colorway. And then we're using the Stylish Shapes dies. I'm gonna be using the two and one eighth diameter circle. Just double checking that measurement really quickly. Yep, two and one eighth. I'm gonna leave that one out. And then we're gonna be using the Decorative Circle Punch. Okay, I love this paired with this die from Stylish Shapes. So fairly easy. I'm gonna show you kind of some tips and tricks here with the little dispenser here. Now I know you're gonna ask me if this will work for glue dots. I'm just gonna quickly do a caveat here. I'm gonna venture to say probably not, and that is only because the glue dots are exposed on the plastic. So no matter which way your glue dots are um, put on the roll, because some of you have received them one way and some of you have received, received them the other. I haven't tested it myself. If one of you is brave, go for it and let me know. But I believe you're gonna have a problem with the glue dots sticking to the inside of the box. Now, the only reason why I doubt that a little bit is because I have a huge glue dots box that I got from Uline and I don't believe those are those are exposed as well. So I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to test it, but in case you're not into the Velcro dots, glue dots may work depending on which way they are oriented on the roll. So there's that. These are also just a little bit thinner than the Velcro dot here, but it should, I don't know, they will fit. I just am not sure about glue dots sticking to the inside of the box. You might have a mess on your hands. So we are gonna start with a piece of blueberry bushel. And this measures, let me get my measurements. Long piece of paper here. Okay, so five and three quarters by eight and one quarter. Now, if you were wanting to really maximize your paper, this should work for those of you that, are, that use A4, because this is eight and a quarter. With five and three quarters, you could actually do this to five and a half, which means you could get two of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. I prefer having a three quarter inch sort of tab there, but you can also get away with a half inch and that would allow you to um, get two out of a piece of eight and a half by 11. It's just real easy. There's no, you don't really have to change the measurements uh, on the project sheet or for this project other than just the size of the card suck that you start with. So five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. You could adapt that to be five and a half by eight and a quarter. I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored here, and we are gonna score this at, on the long side, so I'm on the eight and a quarter inch side. I'm gonna score it at two and three quarters, three and seven eighths, six and five eighths, and seven and three quarters. So again, two and three quarters, three and seven eighths, six and five eighths, seven and three quarters. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and we're gonna score this at one and one eighth, three and seven eighths, and five. So you're gonna look like that, okay? Now I'm gonna come in with the paper trimmer and we're actually gonna do some cutting here. Now this is where I'm double checking my measurements on this. <laughs> so I've turned it where I've got my three quarters of an inch section here on the left. This is technically the top of the box. So in this orientation, this is the top. You're gonna turn that on your paper trimmer to where it's along the left, okay? You've got one and one eighth inch here. Are we doing good? Mm -hmm. And then three quarters of an inch here on the left. So I'm gonna line up the left side at, we're gonna do some cuts here. You know what, let me show you the template. This will make a little bit more sense. We're creating our little dispenser spot here. I actually wanted the dispenser to come down about a quarter of an inch from the top of the box so that there would be no issues with it getting stuck you know, we could have pulled it out from here at the top, but I wanted the lid to just have a nice closure. So it's just like a little dispenser on the side. So we're cutting those two cuts right here. Now you'll see that I've got a line here in the middle and that's gonna be how we're gonna put this together um, to give us some nice edges on the dispenser piece. So 
some tweaks I've made along the way. All right, I'm gonna bring that template back in a moment. Got papers everywhere. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so with the top along the left, I'm reading my notes on my project sheet. We're gonna line up at two and one eighth and two and three eighths. All right, so let's do two and one eighth. We are only gonna cut, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this. I'm gonna zoom in just a smidge. We're only cutting between the first and second horizontal score lines. So you're gonna line up the left edge here at two and one eighth. And you're gonna, I like to put my finger right underneath the cutting groove there to get this lined up right where I want it. Now I think you can see, we've got the measurement here along the side. I just have some post-it tape there. You could do a piece of basic white or something so that you can actually see the measurements. We're gonna come up to the half inch mark and hold on while I make sure I got my cutter in the right spot. So you're cutting from the first score line to the second score line with this lined up at two and one eighth. So I'm gonna do this and just come down and stop. Which measurement is that? One and five eighths. So you're coming down to stop at one and five eighths. If you can see the score line, just stop at the score line. So let me show you what that looks like. We've just, whoops, too close to the camera. We've just put a slice there, okay? You can use an X-Acto knife for this as well if you feel more comfortable. Then I'm gonna slide this to two and three eighths and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So half of an inch, get that on the trimmer, half of an inch. And then we're gonna come down to one and five eighths and stop. So we've just put those two slits, okay? All right, now we can get back to business. We're just gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. Don't even worry about those cuts right now, okay? Oh, I'm totally zoomed in, you guys. Hold oh, on, but that was fun to watch. <laughs> Did you see it yet? Oh, I just fixed it, okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, so bringing in the template so we can look at this for reference. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and focus along the bottom here. I'm gonna bring in my paper snips. And I'm just gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines. The bottom here is that one and one eighth inch section. So the, the section that's wider than the, the opposite section, the smaller one's the top. I'm just gonna cut up each, you know me, I like to cut on the back, each of the vertical score lines. Stopping at that first horizontal. This is how we're gonna create tabs along the bottom here. All right, and then what I'm also gonna do is remove this lower rectangle in the corner. So I'm just gonna come in and also miter cut when I do that. So just a little bit of an angled cutout. So removing that, okay? And then I'm gonna fold these big sections out of the way. I'm gonna flip it over because it's just easier for me. And we're gonna just come in and miter cut these tabs. like so, okay? So the bottom is taken care of, all right? Then I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the top here. So I've turned it this way, four line. So you can see that. So let's start focusing on what we're gonna cut away here from the top. So we've got this little side tab here. I'm actually gonna remove both of these sections, but come in and miter cut. So those two pieces go away, that's this section. This next section, if we're working in this direction, we're gonna go ahead and just remove the outside section. We're gonna leave behind a tab. Okay, so that one's done. 
This one's staying intact as well. This is gonna be our little top flap that tucks in to close the box. This next section, we're gonna just remove this one piece. And then finally, on this last section, we're actually removing both of these sections. So I'm gonna flip it over this way. I'm just gonna cut right along that score line, stopping at that next junction of score lines so that we've got this, okay? So let's fold this out of the way. Got this kind of turned upside down here. Gregor's is here. Not late till you get here, Gregor's. <laughs> Pubba G. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and miter cut these tabs. out of the way like so okay so let's take a corner rounder punch here and I'm gonna round the corners of our little tuck-in tab bring that back in a second so with the corner rounder this style particularly this one is retired but if you've got a style like this I like to fold the to give me a flat edge here so that I can go ahead and punch and then I'll do the same thing over here. So we've got those nicely rounded edges. That's gonna help tuck the tab into the box. All right, now we're gonna focus on adhering our designer series paper. We're gonna do this, this part first before we put the box together because it just makes things so much easier. And I'm gonna show you how we kind of give this a nicer finish, the little dispenser part. So let me get my pieces and parts. Whoops, gathering all my pieces. There should be three of these ones. Okay, so we've got two pieces that measure two and five eighths of an inch square. Now this is a um, non-directional designer series paper. So for these three pieces, it doesn't really matter which direction you cut it. Uh, but these measure one inch by two and five eighths. So one by two and five eighths, you're doing three pieces, okay? And then these are two and five eighths of an inch square. So I'm gonna start by adhering the square pieces and those will be fairly obvious where those go. You're gonna have about a 16th of an inch. I really wanted to maximize the designer series paper on here because it is a smaller box. I love using that 16th of an inch of the cardstock peeking from behind. And you can also, if you like the smaller gingham, go ahead and adhere that side if you prefer. I love this paper. We had the weirdest weather in Atlanta today. It was 72 degrees at the bus stop. And what? Two, less than two hours later, it dropped 20 degrees. And like three. Yeah, we had a storm come through and it was super windy and it was all of a sudden like, felt like it was a different day. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna see that these other pieces are gonna go in this orientation, but I'm saving this one because we've got to do a little bit of treatment to that dispenser part. So I'm gonna do the one that goes in the middle and the one that goes along the top. Now again, if your pattern is directional, two of the pieces you'll cut in portrait and one you're gonna cut in landscape. So just keep that in mind depending on the paper that you're using. But they all have the same measurements, the one by two and five eighths. I'm gonna turn it this way because it's just easier for me to adhere sideways. Or I should say line things up. go and then I'll turn this one back if you're conserving designer series paper you don't have to put the DSP on the back but I love to make things pretty in my craft room 
It's worth the extra paper. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do one more thing before we focus on the side here. I'm just grabbing a little half inch circle punch. We're gonna put a little finger notch right here on the side that doesn't have the extra piece or that tab section. So just, I'm not going quite halfway into the half inch, but just a little finger notch there to make it easy to, that'll make it easy for us to refill the box. Cause you know, you're gonna be making lots of 3D projects and using up all your Velcro dots, so. It's got to be refillable. All right, so here's what, I didn't do this originally with this box, so let me show you. I don't know if you can tell, but the edges here on either side of the slit are a little bit unfinished. So this is my idea to kind of change that. I'm gonna come in and just put my paper snips right in the center of that slit and then just cut, okay? And I'm going to actually fold these under now, they don't need to be, what is this, an eighth of an inch? One and one eighth cut in a half is something crazy. A sixteenth something or other. <laughs> Just eyeball this. You're gonna cut it in half, but you're gonna trim off some of the excess. I'm actually gonna cut both of these, I don't know, kind of in half. If that makes sense. Because I just don't need that full strip. I just need a little bit to fold over the edge. This will make more sense once we do it. Okay, so I basically have just kind of trimmed away. This is not on the template. I'm just kind of showing you we're doing this by hand here. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue and we're basically just going to put a dot on the back of these little pieces and I'm just gonna fold that over. And that just gives me, I'm gonna give that a second to adhere. It just gives me that nice folded edge. Um, gives it more of a, a, a nicer finish. Okay, do the same thing to the other one. Just folding it back. Nobody's gonna see this once we close the box, so don't worry about what it looks like on the inside. But just something simple so then you get that nice folded edge there on either side, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna adhere the designer series paper right over the hole there, but we are actually going to trim down the center of that. So this is totally up to you. I'm gonna wing it and try to do it after I've adhered the piece in one piece. If you want to, you could trim ahead of time. Um, I'm gonna just do this on my own, or in one piece. My brain is fried this week, you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm just eyeballing to make sure that we've got, we're gonna have about a 16th of an inch of the Blueberry Bliss peeking out from behind it. So I'm just gonna put a thin strip here. I recommend putting the glue on the cardstock itself versus the paper. I'm just gonna put a little strip here. And then, again, remembering that I want a 16th of an inch. I can kind of go right up to the edge there, like so. So just kind of showing you what that looks like. That way we're not just getting a gluey mess. You could do this over the silicone craft mat as well. I just didn't wanna get my scissors all gunky. So we're kind of going right over that hole and you're probably thinking, what are you doing, Julie? <laughs> a little bit similar to what we did with the cardstock. All right, so now again, you could use an X-Acto knife here if you wanted to. I'm just gonna take my scissors. This doesn't need to be pretty because we're just folding it over. I'm just kind of cutting right down the center. You see what I'm doing there? Just a little trim. And then I'm actually going to fold these right over. You're gonna have a teeny tiny amount of cardstock here, but we're gonna use um, adhesive to get that in place. Now, if this is too tedious for you, you could absolutely cut a longer strip than two and five eighths and have something a little bit longer. So I'm gonna come in and just kind of burnish. So that's kind of folded under, see that? And then just the tiniest bit of glue. Now here you might want to use uh, the adhesive remover. I'm literally just putting a little bit of glue right underneath that flap. Tiny, tiny. And again, this is just to have a finished, I'm gonna get glue everywhere, but that's okay. <laughs> just holding it and leaving the glue on my fingers. <sighs> I should probably link to the adhesive remover and 
the description too because I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna stick to my paper is what'll happen. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna burnish. And again, if you wanna make your paper a little bit longer, go for it. This isn't gonna be pretty on the inside. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit because um, the wet glue that oozed out, okay? But basically what we then have is if you look on the other side, you just have a really nice finish from the designer series paper and the cardstock. And that's going to give it a little bit of strength when you have the um, Velcro dots going through that hole. So I'm just coming in with a rubber adhesive eraser and just kind of cleaning up my mess. Possibly. Oh, still a little bit wet. There we go. These adhesive erasers are magic if you don't already have one. A regular eraser, like on a pencil, doesn't work so well because it wears away the adhesive. This is a really strong rubber that does a great job at removing liquid adhesive. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we've got our nice finish on the front. Nobody's going to see what that looks like on the inside, but that just gives us that nice folded finished edge. So now we can put together our box. I'm going to go ahead and fold on the second score line from the left. Where'd my glue go? There we go. And then I'm going to, I've got adhesive on my hand still. So folding on the second score line from the left and the first score line from the right. I'm folding that flat. <laughs> Vicki, you're probably right. I was just questioning myself there for a second. That was like an optical illusion with the little thing in there. I was like, wait, what did I do wrong? But I didn't. <laughs> that disappears. All right. So now we're going to focus on the bottom. Uh, our seam is here. I just did a, a 360 degree turnaround for you there. You're like dizzy. Like, whoa, what happened? Okay. So our seam is here, so this is going to be the front of our box. So I'm going to focus on putting the two tabs down. I'm going to fold that out of the way. There we go. Liquid glue on the tabs just to keep them in place. And then liquid glue on that front flap. I kind of like to fold things. So I've got a flat surface there. I'm going to fold the back flap, then the front flap, and then square things up. And then I'm just going to come in with my glue bottle and press from the inside. There we go. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to beg, borrow, or steal because I don't think my other Velcro dot roll. So this is a fairly new roll of Velcro dots. I believe in the link in the description, it's a, you get 75 in the package. So I basically sandwiched both strips together, the hooks and the loops, and then rolled them fairly tight before I put them in the box. Um, and it'll unravel just to the right size, but I'm going to put that in the box and then you feed the end out the side there. And then we can go ahead and close the box. Now, can you see that that's kind of fighting me a little bit to go into the box? We probably need to just shave off a little bit right here from the edge. I'm just giving it the slightest bit of a trim. You guys aren't even gonna be able to see that little piece. Just a little sliver off of that and then that's gonna stop. I think that'll stop fighting me. Now I'm wondering if what I did with the, <laughs> I think it's the little thing we folded in. There we go. So we tucked that in, got our little dispenser. You can just pull out one as you need it. And then you can just come in and trim right between those dots. One of the reasons why I know a lot of you have asked um, if I ever use the three eighths of an inch Velcro dots, and those actually come on a rectangular sheet, um, both separately hook and loop, but they're not in um, a storage option that you could put into a box like this on a roll. So that's part of why I lean towards the uh, five eighths of an inch circles just because they're just so much easier to use. So you just trim off one as you need to. Okay. And then the back of our box is where our little finger notches and we're going to go ahead and decorate the front. Okay. 
All right, let me get my, I think I forgot to put a stamp on a clear block, so hang tight for that. Time spent together is the sweetest. All right. That should work. Let me make sure that'll fit. Yes. So blueberry bushel ink. Got a scrap piece of basic white. Ooh, I love this blue. and we'll grab the die and some tape. I'm going to grab two pieces of tape here. All right, let me get my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I love these dies so much because of the stitching detail that they add. I can't imagine life without circle punches or circle dies. They're just so versatile. All right, so again, that was two and one eighth inch in diameter. There's our stamped sentiment. I love the font in this stamp set. And then I'm going to punch a blueberry bushel decorative circle. All right, so you'll notice on the decorative circle that it's got, it's not the same all the way around. So you kind of have to decide. I like this orientation. I don't know if you can kind of see these two points are a little bit different than if I turn it this way. There's kind of three rounded sections. So I'm gonna turn it this way as my top and bottom. And then we're just gonna adhere this, paying attention to the top and the bottom and kind of lining up the sentiment that way. I'm so glad you guys love this. It just makes me happy to have a fun gift box, but it's holding, it's basically a organization tool, which I love. You know me and organization. <laughs> All right, so I'm just sliding that around there. There we go. I love how you see just a little bit of that decorative circle behind the stylish shapes circle. All right, now we are going to add this to the box. Now, because this is gonna be kind of a staple in my craft room, I'm not gonna use dimensionals on this. I actually wanna put liquid glue. I just think it's gonna last a little bit longer. Nothing's gonna get caught on it with it being popped up on dimensionals. So I'm making sure, again, the finger notch is on the back. And we'll center this, top to bottom, left to right. I feel like I need to have that put on a t-shirt, top to bottom, left to right. There we go. And then one of my favorite packs of embellishments is the Tinsel Gems 4-pack. This one goes so well with the um, Glorious Gingham Designer Series paper. So it's Pretty Peacock, Blueberry Bushel, Berry Burst and Lemon Lime Twist. And those four colors are in here, plus Pecan Pie. So um, I love when paper and um, embellishments go well together. For this one, I think I'm gonna do just one. You'll see this one has three, which I love, but for some reason, one is just a little bit more pleasing to my eye. So whatever your preference is, go for it. So. That works. 
tempted to put more, but I wanted to show you something different. You may see three when I bring this back into my videos, <laughs> but there we go. We have our Velcro Dots dispenser box created using Stampin' Up! products. Isn't that cool? Love the little dispenser on the side. So again, it's completely refillable as you saw. We can move these around to the two different boxes. Um, I would just make sure that you kind of tighten your circle. It'll, the Velcro dots will kind of guide you as to about how small a circle you can make, but don't worry because once you put it in the box, the circle is just going to unravel to exactly the size that it needs. And let me actually share the dimensions of this box. It is two and three quarters by two and three quarters by one and one eighth. So a really great size box. And again, glue dots. Um, at your own risk, they may stick to the inside, but I'd love to hear if you try the glue dots. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and get us ready for tonight's Q live Q&A. Um, again, just a reminder, there is actually, let me put that up on the screen for you. I'm going to put a QR code up as I kind of get things teed up. This QR code, you can take a screenshot on whatever device you are watching me on. If you're watching me on TV, go ahead and use your camera app. This will take you directly to the project sheet. And don't worry if you're not sure how to use the QR code, there's also a link to the project sheet right in the video description. And that'll be a free printable for you that's got the measurements, a picture of the template, a picture of the project so you know which project it is. And let me go ahead and go to the next scene. As a reminder, if you want to have a question addressed tonight. Go ahead and put a Q in front of that question. I've seen some great questions coming through. Get those lined up. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take the QR code off now. Bring it back in a bit. All right. Starting with Peggy Dixon. What's the best way to keep my photopolymer stamps clean? All right. So a couple of things here. Photopolymer, no matter what, is going to stain depending on the color of ink that you're using, especially if it's reds, purples, um, those are gonna, even blues sometimes, they've got a little bit of, um, of that pinkish red in there. You wouldn't think that it does, but um, they will stain your photopolymer stamps. So that doesn't mean they're unclean. However, when you do wanna clean off your stamps, there's a couple of things I recommend. One is Stampin' Up's Stampin' Mist. You can use the Stampin' Scrub. You can even use just plain water with the Simply Chamois. Um, but if your photopolymer stamps start to lose their stickiness, I recommend giving them a little bit of a cool water bath with dish soap. And you can kind of let them sit in there and whatever loose ink that hasn't been stained onto the stamp set will come off in the water. Your water is going to look kind of grimy. So I recommend kind of transferring it to uh, maybe two more bowls of clean water until you can get the soap rinsed off and the water comes clear. And then I would just leave them out on a lint-free towel to dry, to air dry, and those should get their stickiness back. Um, so that's the best way. But again, staining means they're well-loved. It will not change their ability to stamp a clean image for you. So I hope that's helpful, Peggy. Tracy, uh, so there are changes that are coming to uh, the Stampin' Rewards program as well as the, uh, the online website. They're not going to happen for a while, so you're not going to hear me really address them until the time becomes closer. I will say that I am fully supportive of the changes and I'm really excited about them and I think you guys will be excited about them as well. So um, more of my customers will earn rewards with the new program, so I am thrilled. Um, it's gonna be hard for me to wait for the change. But yeah, great changes are coming. They're not happening for a while, so I don't wanna confuse anybody between now and when the changes happen, but I'm thrilled and super excited about them. So stay tuned for that. Are Stampin' Writers used like ink pads? They can, Anne. It is the same ink as what's in the ink pads. It's the water-based ink. So you could absolutely use the Stampin' Write markers to color directly onto stamps. Um, that's a great technique if you are wanting to take one stamp and have it a multicolored image. You can color right on those with our Stampin' Write markers. Now, just to be clear, these are different than our Stampin' Blends. The Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based and you don't wanna color those on your um, stamps, but the Stampin' Write, make, Write markers are the same ink that's in the ink pads. You can also color directly on a clear, clear block to use as like a watercolor palette. 
They're great to match your handwritten note in your cards with the color scheme on the card. So I do love the stamp and write markers and they come in all of our colors. I keep wanting to push a button for some reason. Oh. Let's see. I think you answered this question a few weeks ago, but I forgot what you said. When will we be able to order the glass mat after celebration ends? Great question, Francis. We have not been given a date, but I, I, there has been confirmation that there, in the future, at some point in the near future, the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio will open for pre-order for demonstrators and then customer order after that. So as soon as I have those dates and that information, I'll be sure to share that with you guys. Let's see. The purpose and what's special about the online exclusives. So the online exclusives essentially are just products that are not included in a catalog and it gives Stampin' Up! the ability to offer us some great new products throughout the year without having to wait for a catalog release. We've got three catalog releases that happen during the year. So we've got our annual catalog that usually runs May to May. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have our mini catalogs, one that is September to December and one that is April nope, January to April, the online exclusives release every other month. So kind of in between the catalog re releases, we've got new online exclusives and it gives Stampin' Up! the opportunity to introduce new products. Wait until you see, if you haven't already, what's coming March 5th in online exclusives. Absolutely amazing products and product suites. I think you're gonna love what you see. And it's really just, the ability to have additional products throughout the year that you can choose from. Uh, they're just not included in a printed catalog, so that's why they're referred to as online exclusives. I hope that clarifies that. So I sent her that. <clears throat> awesome. Whoops, I clicked it twice. Brian said he sent you a link. I've got a whole bunch of three by three cards. I went through a whole three by three card phase <laughs> and lots of projects. But yes, I will keep that in mind for future projects as well. <clears throat> I knew I was gonna get this question. So yes, Linda, um, I don't know if you were on at the beginning, you may not have been. At your own risk, the only reason why I say that is I am concerned with glue dots sticking to the inside of the box. Um, I'm trying to think, I believe you, sh I don't know, I don't wanna say, I believe you should be fine as long as your tail is long, but it also will depend on, on which way your glue dots were loaded onto the roll, so. There was a period of time that the glue dots manufacturer was putting the glue dots on one way. So if I peel back the backing here, my glue dots are actually sticking, you can't see that, but sticking to the roll. Some of you, when you peel off the backing, your glue dots are stuck to the backing. So I'm not, my brain is not working <laughs> because we've had a crazy week, um, but I'm not sure which one would work better in this box, but try it. I just am not sure we're gonna have glue dots stick into the inside. Would a fruit by the foot roll fit in the box? I think they're rolled into a small roll in each package. Ooh, it's been a while since I've seen the kids have a fruit fruit roll up. Or not fruit roll up, but the fruit by the roll. I'm not sure. In my mind, I think that paper backing is wider than one and an eighth inches, but I don't know that off the top of my head. So that might be an issue. Um, other than that, the packaging on those, I feel like it would have to come out of the packaging and then that wouldn't be a good thing to put in. It's already in the packaging. Yeah, so I'm not sure. You have to, I don't know, if you have them laying around Kinder Crafts, maybe try it. I'm just, I can't remember what the packaging looks like, sorry. Let's see, in the mini catalog on page 56, the, is it Trusted Tools? Bundle is 54, okay, so ignore the 7550. The right one is 5475. There is a misprint um, in the catalog on the, uh, the bundles page. So the page on page 56, the 5475 is correct. I think they by accident left maybe the Canadian price in there. I can't remember what the difference was, but that 7550 is not correct, so you can ignore that. <clears throat> Let's see. When scoring on the trimmer, which way is the top? Sometimes I feel like it's the opposite of the scoreboard and does it make a difference in the long run? I'm thinking that through, Linda. I think I know what you're asking. Um, oh, 
which way is the top? Okay, so this is hard to explain, but if I'm picturing the scoring, because I almost always use the Simply Score just because it gives more accurate score lines, but the left side of the trimmer is equivalent to scoring on the Simply Scored. Okay, so we want to look at the measurements on the left, if that makes sense. All right, so the cardstock barb is blueberry bushel. It's a beautiful blue. So yes, I wound the Velcro into one circle. It does not come that way. It literally comes two separate strips um, on, it's got, it's an acetate backing, but it's a long strip and you have all the hook sides on one and all the loop sides on one. So as soon as I get a new package, actually sandwich those all together. It takes a little bit of time, it's not too tedious. Um, but I sandwich those all together and then I roll that sandwiched, the sandwich strip into a roll to put it in the box. Oh, this one I don't know if I can answer on the fly. What are your favorite show and tells of all time? Wow. <clears throat> That is a really good question, Candace. Mm. You, what's popping in my mind are some of the early like drawings that Lily would do. The drawing, like they were following that, um, so cute. the draw so cute uh, YouTube channel, and I loved when she would take her artistic um, interpretation of things and add her own like speech bubbles. Those are my favorites from Lil, and then from Nolan. I, I would not sure I'd be able to pick one Lego project, but it says Lego projects, especially the ones where he's not followed like the, um, the instructions for the kid or he's followed it and then he's decided to take it apart and make his own thing. Those are my favorites of his, especially when he's got a good story that comes with it, but I'm not sure I could pick one. It's like asking me to pick one of my favorite children. <laughs> oh, good question. I love that. That made me think. All right, let's see. On page 19 of the mini catalog, there's a heart die on the far right side of the page, but I can't find it anywhere to order. Would you by chance know where the, that die can be ordered? All right, let's study. Page 19. Okay, so um, believe it or not, that heart die is on page 18. So Lisa, if you look on the opposite page um, where it says brayering and layering, it is the Adoring Hearts, well, the Adoring Hearts bundle I would recommend. And it is actually, I'm pointing to the wrong side. It is actually a hybrid embossing folder, which is an embossing folder and dies that work with it. And then a coordinating stamp set. So um, this die I think is what you're talking about is included, you just can't see it. I don't know why they don't show it on this page, but all these little hearts are what is cut out from this little heart die that you see here on page 19. So the Adoring Hearts Bundle. Now, if you just wanted the die, it's the Adoring Hearts Hybrid Embossing Folder. That hybrid embossing folder is actually an embossing folder and a set of dies, okay? I don't know if I have I don't know where mine are. I'm all, all disorganized, but it's over there somewhere. <laughs> Otherwise, I would show you what? the Adoring Hearts hybrid embossing uh, folder. That stack over there. What's that? That stack? Yeah, that stack over there. Let's see. Okay, so Enika, let me see what your question is here. There's two of them. Oh. I don't know. Okay. Is it a question? Let's see. I'm a demo with just three customers. I send them the catalogs and email the online exclusive offers. I feel forced to purchase the latter too. And it's kind well, so here's the thing. You don't have to purchase any of the online exclusives because they're available online for your customers, um, with lots of, uh, inspiration in the photos with them. And I also recommend that they look for inspiration on Pinterest because there are demonstrators all across the world that are using those online exclusive products. So I always recommend just buy what you love and um, your customers will love, will love it too. But uh, don't feel forced to purchase the online exclusives. Um, sometimes, especially as demonstrators, um, they are only available for 
well, some of them are only available while supplies last. Some are restocked. So I always recommend just get the online exclusives that you love and don't feel pressure to purchase them all as a demonstrator. Let's see. I think I answered your follow-up question there, Enika. All right. So I am at the end of the q and A. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me here tonight for episode 320. Uh, we will be live again next Wednesday, March 6th. A quick reminder that celebration ends tomorrow. I don't want you to miss out. If you've been waiting to take advantage of celebration, it'll end at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time tomorrow, February 29th, 2024. There's additional products that were added for the month of February. So if you haven't taken a look at some of the new freebies that were added, they added eight new level one freebies that are current catalog products, but you can get them for free. My favorite being the um, eclectic, the delightfully eclectic designer series paper. It's a mega pack of 12 by 12 DSP or designer series paper. It is 48 sheets of 12 by 12. I want to say it's a $30 value. You can get that for free with a $50 purchase. So that, as far as I know, is still available as a freebie. And again, that's through um, tomorrow, February 29th, 2024. Celebration ends. It won't be back until 2025. So don't miss out if you haven't already. Reach out if you have any questions. You can always reach me at support at thepaperpixie.com. Episode 321 will be next Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. New online exclusives drop on March 5th. So next week will probably be an online exclusive product uh, project for you. Um, but I'm excited for you guys to see the new online exclusives. They're amazing. I love them. Um, so I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week, a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week. Take good care. Oh, and really quick, big shout out to my pa Pixie patrons. You'll see their names in the credits. Thanks. See you next time.